my friends are since. Greetings! Recently I put together a video on a bit of software called Lumen. And Lumen is a kind of virtual analog video synthesis. It lets you run videos through it and process them, but it also generates its own kind of patterns and colours and stuff, much like an analog video synth would. And if you're looking to get that kind of analog glitchy look to your videos, then Lumen's a really good option. However, it does have a couple of drawbacks or limitations. Specifically, it only runs on Mac, and it also costs a wee bit of money. It's not a huge amount of money for what you're actually getting, but it is about £115 or thereabouts, and so it's not an insignificant amount of cash. And people had asked me, is there a cheaper kind of alternative, and is there one that will run on Windows? And luckily enough, there is an alternative option which I quite like, called Cathodomer, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I should say, straight off the bat, much like most of my videos, I am not an expert on any of this stuff. This is just bits and pieces that I have got interested in and have been using. Cathodomer specifically, I've not used a huge amount, but you should know if you want an in-depth tutorial or whatever, then maybe it's better to look elsewhere. What is Cathodomer? Well, it is a kind of virtual CRT display simulator as well as a video synth. So if you're familiar with the old kind of big chunky TV screens, those are coveted by people who do video, synth video synthesis and glitch art. Retro gamers also like CRT screens for some reason. I never liked CRT screens when they were popular, but now I've come around. Anyway, the whole point of this particular bit of software is that it replicates that and replicates some of the quirks and interesting bits that people doing glitch art or visual art may find useful. It runs on Steam or it comes through Steam, so that also means that it's compatible with Windows and Mac. So if you're on Windows, this is a good option to look at. Finally, the price of Cathodomar is only £14.99, or at least I paid £15 on Steam for it. So it's a much cheaper option if you want to do some glitchy visual stuff, but you don't want to invest in a more expensive bit of software. So I'm going to take a look at it, give you a crash course, or maybe not even a crash course, but just an introduction so you can get an idea of what it's like before you buy it. I should say that it's quite complicated and I'm not going to be able to go into any of it in great detail, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, also, the other thing I should say is here's my favourite Japanese band again, Massive the Fermenting Dregs, that's who's hiding in the background. So Cathodomer, when you open it, you get this uh, screen which basically asks you what kind of CRT you're wanting to replicate or emulate. There's a whole bunch of different options and they'll give you a coding kind of or corresponding pixel, you know, fucking aspect ratios and resolutions and whatever. I'm just going to stick with PAL at the moment. Theoretically, or not theoretically, you can go up to 1000 by 1000 pixels, but they recommend not doing that because it runs quite slowly. And that is the case even if you've got quite a, a high spec laptop because of the way it renders things. And also it doesn't really matter if you go up to 1000 pixels because the way it's designed to be used doesn't necessarily reward a higher resolution. And that's quite hard to explain. The shape of the CRT is also available to be picked here, and you can have different shapes. I don't understand why you'd ever have a triangle, but there you go. I'm just going to use the default things here, or I've selected PAL, so maybe not default, but you get the idea. This then creates... I just have to readjust some bits and pieces so you can still see my face. Maybe you don't want to see my face. So now what we have here is we have our virtual screen for Cathodomer. We have my face, and we have the the UI itself. Now, uh, you can probably tell by looking at this, this is not the most straightforward UI in the world. And if you just open this up and try and use it, you'll probably be able to figure it out. It shouldn't take too long, but it's not the most intuitive or user-friendly. It kind of reminds me, actually, of old Amiga or old DOS applications. Uh, and I guess that kind of suits what it's doing. The manual also is not, how should I say this? It's not the most comprehensive thing in the world. So it's not as if there's a manual you can just go and read and figure everything out. So you, it's a bit more complicated than something like Lumen where it's that's much more immediately obvious what things are doing, or at least it's easier to figure out. Now, 
I'll go through the various pages of this quickly to give you an idea of what each section does. I'm not going to explain it in detail because, it, as you can see, it's quite complicated. So the first screen here is synthesizer and this acts as a video synthesizer. You can create things um, from scratch by, you know, changing all of these different parameters. But I've found that it's actually quite difficult to create a patch from scratch because uh, all of these things, I mean, I don't understand how they work at all. And when I've tried, like, I, can't, I can never just get anything to appear. Luckily, the way you can get something to appear is up top right here. If you hit randomize, we get a random pattern. And then you can then tweak it to, you know, however you see fit. And of course, I'm doing this and nothing's going to change now. But yes, so this section is essentially, as far as I can tell, it is used to emulate the kind of maybe not static, but some of the patches are more static -y than others. It's, it reminds me of a Commodore 64 when you load up games, you know, that horrible loading screen that you'd plug your cassette tape in and wait for hours for Dizzy the Yoke folk to load. This emulates that kind of thing. And so you get some nice textures. If you're someone who just wants textural stuff to overlay your videos and make them a bit more interesting, then this could be a really good option. Instead of going out and buying one of these packs you see advertised, you know, for um, Final Cut Pro or Premiere or whatever, from people that want like 50 or like 90 quid for a bunch of different textures to make your video look analog, you can just buy Cathodomer and find an interesting pattern you like in this and overlay it. And for this section alone, I think it's worth the 15 quid because it does give you a fair amount of, you know, variability. Is that a word? Yeah, so this alone is worth the cost of entry for me because it does give you some really interesting patterns. And if you record this it, and you blended these in with your existing video on Final Cut Pro or, you know, again, whatever application you're using, then you can quite easily and quickly get some really interesting glitchy effects. Now, up the top here, there are various different, these are basically preset selections. So you can have one, two, three, four, five, you can have five different ones, which means that if you're playing live or you wanted to trigger these in some way, you can do so pretty quickly. So yeah, there you go. The other thing I should say actually is that these parameters are MIDI controllable. I have not used this with MIDI yet, so um, sorry. But theoretically, you should be able to map every parameter to a MIDI value. This, that's a really nice one, actually. I like this pattern. Moving swiftly on, I've rearranged my display so you can see a couple of extra bits and pieces here. That's because I'm going to be talking about the second bit of Cathodomer, which is an area that I think most people or lots of people will be interested in. And that is source, where you can inject different kinds of media into Cathodomer, process it and spit it out onto its virtual CRT display. Now you can use various different kinds of media in different kinds of ways. So you can take in like a video file or an image and load it directly into Cathodomer, or you can stream it from a webcam or another external source like OBS. And you can also even put in things like images, audio files, and even online streams, I think. But I don't know exactly how that would work or how well that would work with uh, the latency. But the point is you can do it. So once you've loaded in your source, whatever that may be, you can see here that I have a couple of different sources on bank. So they're all in one of these five sections that you can enable or disable. You can have them all or none of them running at once. And the important thing to know is that to turn them on, once you've loaded them in, you need to enable them by setting them to online up in the top right. Now you'll see here, we instantly get something on our virtual display here. You will also note the latency. And this is something that I've run into is quite a big issue is that it's not a real time processing. And the way that things are rendered within Cathodomer often means that the time is off. And so the file you get is much longer than the file you input into it. And I haven't found the reason for that. It could just be a processor thing or whatever. But 
be aware of it because if you're thinking you can just spit video into this, take it back out and then line it all up, you can't. You might have to adjust things. It's really a trial by error process. But anyway, once you've got your source loaded in, you can do a bunch of things to it, obviously, within this screen. The first kind of big things that you want to do is adjust the image itself. You can adjust the scale of the image on the screen. And this is particularly useful if you've got a widescreen video that you're wanting to run through a 4x3 CRT or virtual CRT. So you can either have the horizontal and vertical bars or you can zoom in so there's no distance at the side if that makes sense. You can also change the way the screen kind of bends and shapes. So I've got the bend on just now, but you can see if I do this, it kind of stretches the screen vertically or horizontally. And if you couple that with some of the other effects later on that I'll show you, you can make the screen look quite CRT-like, like a traditional CRT. We have a bunch of transport options here for looping the video, etc. but I won't go into them. The other things in here which may be of interest are the way that you can blend the image with the uh, video synthesis and other elements. So we do have a uh, kind of different blend modes down here, just standard stuff you would see in any video processor or Photoshop or you know things like that. So if I load up a uh, video synthesis from earlier, we've got some of our glitchy stuff in there. Let's scale up that image so it takes up the full screen. You can see already that combining it with the kind of glitchy video synth stuff is beginning to look quite interesting and if we want to take out bits of the image so that more of the video synthesis comes through. You can do that using the alpha threshold and the various alpha uh, sliders here. And if you're combining multiple different sources, that can look really cool and really quite trippy. Oh, I should have said, you can choose uh, the X and Y position of the screen as well. So you do have control over where the screen sits. It's not just scaling. So I'll turn the video synth off again. If we go into extra, so we're jumping ahead a couple of things. This gives you more control over the actual CRT display itself, or at least the virtual CRT display. And I'm going to be honest, I don't fully understand this section much like the rest. But here we have control over the audio. I'm going to skip this for now. The top section here allows you to add in some extra kind of elements which make the CRT seem more lifelike. For example, we have the scan line section, which is my, one of my favorites. Now, I don't know or understand all of the technical explanation about what scan lines are and why they happen or whatever else. I just know they look pretty cool. But if you've ever tried to record a TV screen, you'll have noticed, depending on the refresh rate and the settings on your camera and stuff, it's quite hard to capture and you might get rolling kind of horizontal lines or banding or whatever. And this allows you to create that kind of effect. So you can do it either horizontally only, you can do it diagonally or whatever you want. You can see now I've enabled the scan lines here, you begin to get a wee pattern here. You can of course change the intensity on the screen as you might expect. You can change the size of the scan lines, you can change the you know kind of thickness or the amount of them. You can choose how much they move around. You can choose whether they blend to match the screen shape. You can change the blend mode so they're you know a bit more blocky or whether they kind of just, I don't know, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And this can really make your CRT seem a bit more alive. So I like that section a lot. There are some other bits and pieces in here like that. You can degrade the quality of the video so it looks much more messy and distorted and lo-fi. You can do all different cool stuff in here. The bit that is maybe most important though is this section down here and this is to do with how things are rendered and at the moment this video or this uh, virtual screen isn't all that bright and that is something that I kind of struggled with a wee bit understanding how all that relationship works together and if we increase the pixel size you'll see that the perceived brightness is greater and of course it's still very lo-fi the way it's set up at the moment and that is partly because if you think about when you're photographing or videoing a bright CRT screen this is kind of how it would look you don't get necessarily a perfect reproduction of the video. So yeah, you have to bear that in mind and uh, really treat it 
treat cathodomer for what it is, which is a, a display simulator, not a perfect reproduction of the video. There are ways to get the video to look more like a video or more look like the source image, for example, and you can change it so that it's displaying it as a texture rather than using pixels and, you know, zoom it in differently and everything. But anyway, you can also adjust the shape of the screen itself or like the, that kind of barrel distortion, which can really give it a bit more of an authentic look, depending on how you set it up. So you've got a huge wide variety of choices in here for how you can set up your CRT to look interesting. The next section I'm going to show you is arabesque. I don't know why it's called that, uh, but here we are. Now up the top right, we have the usual stuff for randomizing like we did on the video synthesis page. You can create different patches by randomizing them. I find that is often easier than creating it from scratch. If you randomize it first and then adjust to your taste, then yeah. Much like the other pages, you do need to turn off or on the effect. Weirdly, the online offline button is on the top left here, whereas in source it's on the top right, which, you know, yep, UI, whatever. But let's turn one on and you can see what this is. Basically, Arabesque is kind of like a pattern generator in a sense. So you get a whole bunch of different kinds of patterns that you can add on top of the screen. And you can either have them still as it is just now, or you can have them rotate. And depending on the pattern, you'll see different kinds of rotation. Uh, of course, you can also do all the usual things like change the scale of it. You can change the X position and Y position. You can choose whether or not it bends in a certain way. You can choose how much zoomed in it is. You can change the blend mode so that it's either more prominent or less prominent. You can change the colors. You can change basically everything about it. And this can be really cool when used sparingly as an effect to do it in time with your music, if you're using a music video, for example. And you do have to be quite creative, uh, but it comes with some, it can provide you some really interesting effects, or it can be something really subtle, just like a, a kind of banding down the bottom like this. Now, the final part of Cathodomart to show you just now is the figure section. And this essentially allows you to overlay a figure on top of the video. And this can be a GIF that you've imported, or you can draw individual frames as like a sprite, and then you can do weird things with them. Now, the thing I like about this is that it is quite a powerful and simple animation tool. So I've got something here that I loaded earlier. Let's say you wanted to add text on top of your screen. You create your sprite here, and then you turn it on by selecting Sprite, and then you get a display over the top. And what I love about it is that it can be a really interesting way to display text. You can do all the usual things, scale it up, scale it down, and you get that beautiful, like, a trail effect, which I really like. You can do, of course, all the other kind of things you would expect, like you can mirror it, you can change the blend mode so that it kind of blends a bit more nicely into the video itself, and all that kind of good stuff. You can also modulate it so it moves about on its own, which is a really cool effect, although to be honest, can probably be a bit uh, epilepsy triggering depending just how much you tell it to modulate. There you go. Now you can probably, hopefully, begin to see the possibilities with this, but if we turn that off and then go into the next sprite or next figure that I created earlier, this beautiful banana here. Now if I scale this up, what you can do is create animations by copying and pasting this frame and modifying it slightly. So let's say, copy that, go into frame number two, paste it in, and then let's modify it. Let's create, I don't know, a, get a pink color, and I'll put in some kind of speech bubble here, and I'll say, I don't know, what will I say? Oops, shit. Uh, I'll say, fuck. Oh, man. I wouldn't be able to type this out. It does take a wee bit of time, like all sprite kind of drawing things to, to draw your sprite perfectly, but whatever. Okay, fuck it, that'll do. 
okay, it's a terrible animation, but you get that idea. And if you spend a bit of time in this, you can really begin to do some pretty cool stuff and record it in real time with you moving it about or using the kind of you know automatic movement that's included in this. Now, the other things you can do here are you can turn it into a pattern, <laughs> which, oh, Jesus, how terrible is that? Turn it into some god-awful pattern, or you can turn it into a fractal, which is even worse. But this is probably my favourite section because, honestly, the amount of cool stuff you can do with this in quite a short space of time is fairly impressive. And the other thing actually is that when you blend it in a certain way, it looks really good on the virtual CRT. So this is one section I would encourage you to explore a bit more. I'm curious to see what people are doing with this. <clears throat> now, as for recording the output of Cathodomer, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do this. Uh, if you've watched the other video on Lumen, then you'll know a few of them. But the way I've found the easiest and the most efficient is to use Siphon Server. Siphon is a bit of software, which actually I'm using here with my face to display things. But it's a free bit of software, on Mac at least. I don't know about on Windows. You'll have to find it out for yourself. But you start your Siphon Server. That then allows Cathodomer to appear in Siphon itself, and you can just record the output. You can render the output of Cathodomer directly to a file, but I would not recommend that because when I tried it, it was extremely slow and it was, I mean, the output was massive, like huge file sizes. And even in Cathodomer's own uh, documentation, they recommend using a frame share app like Siphon. That's all I have to say about this. It's a bit of a rambling mess, probably, but that's partly because the app really does take experimentation. It's one for you to go in and fill about with and find something that looks good to you rather than necessarily understanding what every parameter does. Or perhaps that's just the way I work. But if you're looking for an interesting way to make your visuals or give your visuals a wee bit more character, then this is definitely one to consider, especially given the low cost of it and the possibilities that are there. If you've got any questions about this, uh, I can't answer them because I don't know what I'm doing, but I would encourage you to go try it out for yourself. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful summer and please share with me any videos you make because I will be most interested. Goodbye.